Hey you guys, Matt Allen, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we've got another buyer's guide for you. We are talking swim baits. We're in the middle of the Black Friday sales and that is prime time to talk swim baits. Let's get to it. Hopefully you guys have been following along the buyer's guides. We just covered all the rods and reels, all the different price points. If you guys didn't get a chance to check those out, we'll leave a link to those down below in the video mm -hmm. description. But today is the first video buyer's guide on baits and we wanted to do swim baits. Even though Matt just did a complete in-depth right. video just a couple weeks ago, this is gonna be kind of the cliff notes. You know, we're gonna give you the baits uh, that we use all the time and uh, yeah, those of you guys that want to get into swim bait fishing, this stuff will get you covered. Either uh, soft, blade, uh, soft baits, hard baits, mm -hmm. glide baits. Uh, why don't you kick it off? Let's do it. You know, these are just a handful of the baits that we covered in that video, but if you want to get into swim bait fishing, the Black Friday sales are a, a heck of a time Good to time do to it. Good time to start, yep. Swim baits can be pretty expensive, especially compared to other tackle. So getting in on a sale is prime time to do it. So. Essentially, we'll break this down into three groups. You've got what we'll call open water fish, and those are typically the fish that are eating trout, kokanee, things like that. Then you've got fish that are feeding on bait fish. That typically happens near the bottom, near the shore, around cover. And then we've got those that feed on bluegill. So three categories. Talking open water first, we, we picked one open water glide bait, one open water soft bait. This is the Bait Sanity Explorer. Comes in a bunch of colors, comes in a beautiful trout pattern. I grabbed this one because this is their newest color. This is their raw color. It's essentially bone. And I grabbed this because bone is an amazing striper color. And I'm so glad that this bait finally comes in a really, really good striper color because of our history with this bait. My PB came on the Explorer in the trout color. But the Explorer is an affordable open water glide bait. You can spend hundreds of dollars on glides that have that big wide swim. And here you're doing it for a fraction of the price. This is a really good bait that I've had a ton of success with the past few years. Yeah, swim baits, swim baits can get crazy price. I mean, you can spend several hundred, if not a thousand dollars on baits. Right. So uh, we pick baits that are readily, readily available. And down mm -hmm. below in the video description, we'll pick one or two of our favorite colors in all of these. Perfect. That way uh, you guys are covered. So, so sticking with that, open water, trout eaters, obviously you can't go wrong with an eight inch Huddleston. Mm -hmm. uh, two different ROFs, which is rate of fall. Typically, if you're gonna be casting and reeling, you know, I like to go with an ROF 5. If you're going to be th fishing a little bit deeper, go with a 12. If you're going to be fishing on bottom, go with a 12, just creeping it on bottom. But it doesn't get much better than that. I mean, that looks like an 8-inch trout. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many hundreds of double digits have been caught on this bait right here, but a lot. So if you don't want to go with the glide and you want to go with something you can cast out, swim it on bottom, swim it mid-column, the Huddleston 8-inch is a must. That's about as proven as it gets. Yeah. All right, next up, transitioning into more of those bait fish eaters. That can be shiners, that can be herring, that can be hitch, it could be shad. All of those fish that bass run around and ambush, you start switching to a different action. You want tighter actioned baits. You don't want that big giant glide. You need that in open water. Again, this is the cliff note, so right. we won't go super in we depth will, about we it. We will link that other video down below in the video description too. If you guys haven't had a chance to go watch it, uh, all of this stuff is very in depth. Yes. So these are tighter action baits. These are baits that'll get twitchy. They'll get reactive. You can pop that rod tip, get them to turn, get them to move. This guy right here is the G-Rat Sneaky Pete. We did a top 10 baits video last week. Mm -hmm. This was one of the top 10 baits of the year. It's a bait in this color is a bait that we have just smashed with this year. It's got a very hinged action. So when you're working that bait, it's pretty aggressive in its swim. It's got a lot of sound to it. It works really well around the country, parts of the country where you're not necessarily thinking clear water, trout eater, suspended fish, right? 
more of the what a lot of people face, that murkier water, fishing around cover, fishing shallow water. That's a bait that'll get in there, it makes some ruckus, you can twitch it, get aggressive, and it will get those bites. Yeah, another, uh, that bait really, really shines in current as well. Yes, it does. I'm glad you said that. A lot of glide baits will completely blow out Watch in current. They, they won't swim. And that is a bait. The guys that designed it are river fishermen. That bait really works well in current and has also, much like the Explorer, caught a ton of giant striper. Yeah, we're, we're, we, we love that bait, especially now being here on the, the TVA system. Um, that bait's going to be money. Now, if you guys have followed us for a long time, you guys know that we absolutely love this guy right here. This is the S Waver 168. Now, if you're entry, if you're a beginner swim bait fisherman and you want to get into glide baits, this is your number one bait. Fairly right. inexpensive, uh, comes in great colors, fish catching colors all over the country. Depending on where you're at, you can pick either some ghost trout stuff if you're fishing real crystal clear water, light trout, bluegills. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they, they have great colors, but the 168, just like the, the Sneaky, uh, just catches a ton of fish, big fish, multiple double digits, and giant spotted bass, giant smallmouth. Right. I mean, it does it all. It's not, an, it's not a giant bait by any means, but it gets giant bites, and it's very, very easy to fish. And probably the number one thing is you don't need specific swim bait gear yeah. to throw this. You can throw this on your favorite jig rod or your, your kind of lighter heavy action rod, like a 734, something like that. But again, very easy to fish, cast it out. One, two, three, four, twitch, twitch, one, two. I mean, just that cadence. And on those twitches, usually that second twitch when that bait darts left and then right, that's when you get your bite. But the S Waver 168, is probably the number one beginner to advanced <laughs> glide bait out right. there. It is the place a beginner should start, but right. it's still one of the primary baits right. that we throw all these years later. Yep. So switching over to soft baits. Typically, when you're thinking shad and bait fish eaters, you move away from that slow Huddleston style tail, you go to a boot tail. Those boot tails move a lot more water, they're aggressive, they kick hard, they flash, they're given a lot of vibration, and that is a lot more like what those bait fish are doing. Those smaller bait fish tend to move quickly, they're erratic, they move a lot of current as they're moving, right? There's actual water coming off that tail. This emulates that very well. This is a mag draft, and the mag draft was a bait that we kind of missed early on. It wasn't until that underwater footage we, we were shooting underwater footage comparing a bunch of baits, and when we got an underwater perspective of this bait, we, we both went, hmm, wow, <laughs> we missed that one. So we've worked it into the arsenal a little late, honestly, but the Magdraft 8-inch, it also comes in a smaller size, but I really, really like the 8. Fishes well. I mean, this is out of the package. It fishes extremely well right out of the package, and you're set. Next bait up for me is going to be this guy right here. This is a Scottsboro Tackle. This is a six inch swim bait. Um, you know, you can get this in smaller sizes. You can get some of these baits in smaller sizes, but mm -hmm. I feel like the six inch kind of is that transition size yeah. where you're really fishing for those larger fish, those bigger bites. But the Scottsboro Tackle, this thing has a, looks really good underwater, a lot of side to side action. Pair that up or rig that with an ADOT beast yep. hook. But the benefit of this setup versus some of those other setups that are those other baits that Matt has talked about is the fact that it's weedless. Mm -hmm. You can throw this up through the tulies, up through your bull rushes, your laydowns, um, and 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 fish effectively through that stuff without getting hung up when you can't with those other baits. But this guy right here is an awesome soft swim bait. So he nailed it right there. Let me see that bait. This guy, you're going to fish up in the water column. Keep it up high, way up off bottom, and call the fish, and they will come up to get it. This guy, rigged weedless, you can put that thing on the bottom and crawl it, just banging down through the rocks, through the cover, up over laydowns, and get those fish. So, two similar swimming baits for two completely different, different approaches. That's why we're talking about both of them. Now this one is one that I just started to play with when we got out to this part of the country. Uh, this is the Savage Gear Shiner. 
and it's actually got more of a wedge style tail, which is typically a slower tail. But on this bait, that wedge is fairly small compared to the bulbous round body of the bait. This guy is a really, really good big shad imitator, shiner imitator, that full size bait. You're not talking about little tiny thread fins, right? We're talking about gizzards, golden shiners, things like that. This tail, because of its shape and its size, kicks super hard behind this bait. So it's not what you would think. You'd think you'd throw it out there, creep it, and you'd have this little waggle, and that's not what it is. That thing is back there just pumping, and it's a really, really good looking bait. It's a line through, which I like. So you can rig it belly, or you can route up and rig it on the back as well. So you can rig it and fish it high in the water column, or you can re-rig and bottom bounce and go slow with it down through the cover if you want to. That's a very versatile bait that I have not put a ton of days into yet. I've got a handful of days on it, but in the first five minutes, I knew that that was a bait that was going to be on the deck all the time in this part of the country, and I'm really happy with it. Yeah, he keeps talking about this part of the country. We've we've recently moved to oh, the that's east, important. Yeah, yeah, to uh, eastern Tennessee. So, um, you know, if you're out in California and you have and you're fishing trout fisheries, obviously go with something that uh, mimics trout. But like Matt said, that is an awesome bait to mimic the bait fish that are out here. And I'm gonna stick with the Savage Gear because I'm actually blown away. And we've talked about it in previous videos. Savage Savage Gear's come a long way in a short amount of time. You know. Before it wasn't baits that we really even looked at. But when you look at a bluegill like this guy right here, that thing looks so realistic. It swims amazingly. Uh, and there's been a hole in the market for a long time for a little soft swim bait, that, a soft bluegill swim bait, real stout hook on it. So you can fish this on the bottom. You can fish it, you can cast it out and just reel it back like a spinner bait. But um, where I think this is really gonna shine is come, come pre-spawn and spawn you know, fishing a little bluegill around those big, um, big beds and uh, getting those big, big, they, big girls they to smash choke this thing. thing. They choke. Yeah, they don't want bluegill around their beds. So, um, but that thing looks so realistic and it swims so good. Uh, well done, Savage Gear. Well, since you're talking bluegill, why don't you wrap it up and then I'll okay. I'll go kind of JDM over here. Yeah, the last bluegill uh, bait that I want to talk about is the Jackal Ganterell. It is a three-piece bait, but this fish is more like a glide bait. Again, you're going to be doing your, your normal cadence and then add a real twitch in there and that thing's going to dart off and just kind of shimmy. It doesn't really have the kind of the glide off like that a, a, a big glide will. It just kind of has that swim off, but that is when you're going to get your bites. Um, mm -hmm. These guys catch... I mean, we caught so many big peacocks and stuff down in South America on these things. Big, Arapaima. large. Arapaima. Yeah, Arapaima. <laughs> um, we have thrown the heck out of this bait right here and it is quickly jumping up into our, our must-have on deck. Absolutely. All right, to wrap it up, a couple of new baits for you because, again, there's a sale going on. And if you want to branch out, if you want to try something different, sale time is the time to do that. Don't be like me who bought these months ago <laughs> for full boat. But seriously, a couple of JDM baits that came over that I'm really intrigued by and I've had a blast fishing. Balam came out in a smaller size. This is a 245. The first Balam is such a big bait that I don't think the typical angler is really putting the time into that bait. It's an intriguing bait, it's fun but it's not a bait that most guys are throwing all day every day. But this size, the 245, is a much fishier size. And this bait is really interesting. It's tighter actioned. So they've paired up um, a, a solid bodied bait with a really, I mean, paper thin tail back here. What you get when you throw this thing out and you start to reel, this guy fishes essentially just under surface. It's almost bulging. The head will just have the tiniest waggle to it. You can see it, and because it's painted white, you can see it out there. It's just this little bit of waggle out in the water. But back behind that, that tail section is going. So it doesn't have that S like a glider at all. Completely different action. If your fish are seeing a lot of gliders, this is a whole different animal. 
It's tight in the front with a really good swim behind, and it has this unique sound to it. It's like a low thud as that thing is kicking through the water, and it, it flat works. It's a completely different look and profile. And then I love, in hard baits, I love baits that don't have tons of appendages, right? There are literally no fins on this bait. So if they come up and eat it, they're getting a face full of hook one way or another. There's nothing that's going to block that hook. The other one is this guy right here. This is the Fish Arrow Riser Jack. Fish Arrow and DRT paired up. So Fish Arrow has been around forever. When we were first playing with swim baits a long time ago, there were some Fish Arrow baits that came and went on the market. But this is a different animal. I was, so I love swim baits, right? And I, I geek out on them. So I'm always watching <laughs> Japanese videos and all sorts of stuff, right? And I was watching videos last year of this riser jack. I had no idea it would come to the US market, but it was a very different bait, super tight actioned, right? It doesn't have this, this hinge. It's not, it's not kicking like you think it will. It's very tight as it's coming through the water, but it'll dive, it's a floater, it'll dive down. And then when you stop it, it does something that no other swim bait that I've ever fished does. It turns head up to go to the surface. Now, whether that's good or bad, it's different. completely different. So when I was watching those videos of guys fishing this thing, they'd run it up on cover, stall it, and that thing would float up over a rock, float up over a tree, and those fish would just come out and smash it as it's literally headed to the surface away from them. So as soon as I could get my hands on one, I started throwing it out here, and I put five or six, like, Literally the first bait I threw once we moved to Chickamauga was this. I put five or six days in a row out here in the summertime, just throwing this thing around cover, having a blast with it. So completely different style of bait. It does something that nothing else does. It's a little more niche, but if you want to try a different bait, this is prime time to do it. And both of these are great options. Very cool. Yeah, that the JDM stuff, the Jap Japanese domestic market is, you know, they have a lot of stuff over there that we can't get. So when it comes over here, um, it's very cool to get. Yeah. Real quick, let's talk about rods. And uh, hopefully you guys saw our, our, our buyer's guys for our rods. But if not, uh, our number one swim bait combo for the larger swim baits is going to be the, the, this is the IMX Pro 966 mm -hmm. paired up with a Tranks 300 uh, braid to liter, monofilament liter. But uh, those have been really hard to get. If you can get your hands on them, get them. Another great option is going to be the Fury line, either the 806 or the 795. Mm -hmm. Those all work great. A little bit more of a budget rod. I think you're right around 120, 130 bucks for that rod right there. Those are but, good rods for the yeah, price. They're, they're, they're great. So we'll link it because you can't get our, our regular swim bait rods and literally haven't been able to all year. We'll, li we'll link you the Fury and a couple other swim bait rods. If you want to get a, a dedicated swim bait rod and you need one now, we'll link you some really good options. And then the other thing is we always throw the tranks and I don't even have the one I want to talk about with me today, of course. It, <laughs> it's not a buyer's guide if we don't forget something. Uh, but the Corrado 300 is supposed to hit in the next couple of weeks, Mid this December. side of Christmas, yeah. um, and you can pre-order them right now. So the Corrado K300 300. will save you quite a bit over a Tranks. I put it through the paces, uh, caught striper on it, caught, I don't even know what that thing was called. I caught a creature when we were up on the Great Lakes on it. Not a snakehead. Oh, a bowfin. There we go, I caught a bowfin on it that just tore me to pieces. But that reel has held up really, really well. I was impressed with it. Um, so if you want to save some money over going to a Tranks, that Corrado 300 would be a great reel to pair up. Mm -hmm. But again, you cannot go wrong with a Tranks. It has, in the past, we threw full-size round reels, Calcutta's, Calcutta TE's, Conquest's, and the Tranks has all but taken it over completely. Right. It's right. just such a workhorse. So guys, we'll wrap it up there for today. What's our next buyer's guide? It's tomorrow. Yeah, we got another one tomorrow. I know we haven't decided that yet, right? I don't even know what the order is. Tomorrow <laughs> will be a surprise for you guys, but every single day, these buyer's guides are still going on every day. So yesterday wrapped up high-end rods and reels. Today's swim baits, 
Tomorrow is a mystery. It'll be Bates. We'll just keep on going from there. Guys, we appreciate you. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon. See you guys.